This is Detective Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a 2022 American teen comedy film called Sex Appeal. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Avery Hansen White attends one of the most significant science, technology, engineering, and mathematic competitions around. She prepares to present her experimental software application nervously to the panel of judges. Because of her record-breaking GPA and excellent resume for MIT, Avery, a bright and confident student, arrives at school with a buzzing atmosphere surrounding her. She removes her belongings from her locker and observes the hoopla around prom night. The upcoming STEM competition is something she considers to be her prom. Avery walks into the faculty room and greets everyone except Mrs. Carlson the sex education lecturer who has an air of hostility around her. She visits her advisor, Miss Russell, and the two of them wait for the announcement of the STEM challenge with bated breath. The MC declares that the challenge's theme is to make an app that addresses a problem in their own life, which piques the audience's interest. Though Avery has no idea what she wants to develop, she feigns the opposite. Larson Hecht an old buddy and childhood pal who had been her experimental subject for years, stemming from the boy's untoward advances. When Lisa walks by the two, Larson is distracted, so Avery teases him while explaining that physical desire is natural. Larson wants Avery to dance with him at prom. She declines, telling him that she doesn't need prom night and that he should instead ask Lisa. Nightfall lands and she finds it increasingly difficult to come up with a fitting design for the app that will solve her difficulties since she sees no flaws or compromises in the life she currently has. Avery's phone rings and on the other end of the line is her lover Casper who is overjoyed to see her at the STEM competition and expresses his desire to become more intimate with her there. She hangs up, flustered. She recalls her three mothers, Masuz, a vulgar artist named Deb, and her other mother, Kim, who raised her in two houses without males in a divided atmosphere. Suze noticed Avery's anxiousness, surmising that it was because she anticipated getting more intimate with her lover. Still, Avery visits her other home, where she is astonished to discover Deb and Kim had prepared a variety of condoms for her. They explain that she must be ready for the upcoming experience with her boyfriend by not being ashamed of her naked body. Avery concocts a fantastic idea late at night, solving one of her life's biggest problems, to get better at sex by programming an algorithm into her AI nicknamed Spock. Unsatisfied Satisfied with Spock's answers to her battery of questions, she decides to tweak it further. The next day, she calibrates Spock with ideas coming from Miss Carlson to no avail. The sex education teacher suggests that she turn to her parents for help. With just 27 days remaining, Avery agonizes over calibrating her AI and avoids Casper's calls. This gives her a failing grade in Mr. Vemmer's class, where he criticizes her for failing to comprehend the objective of the Romeo and Juliet reaction paper. Suze advises that she contact her friends, so Avery begins gathering information from peers on campus, beginning with Nikki, who, despite her cheerleading position, does not emphasize sex in her life and has never been in a sexual relationship. Then there's the nerds, Mateo and Jafar who talk about sex positions and methods but have no experience. Next, despite his attractive and strong look, the jock Troy is shy and reserved when it comes to sexual matters. Finally, she turns to a self-proclaimed sex goddess, Danica McCullum, who teaches her sex techniques from her encounters with men while advising Avery to find a partner for sexual practice. In the evening, Avery performs an experiment using the data she acquired to see how Spock responds, but all she hears is sexual gibberish from the AI to her chagrin. Nevertheless, she unexpectedly glances at a photo of herself and Larson, which gives her an idea of what to do the next day. Larson musters the courage to approach Lisa as she performs in the music room. Suddenly, Avery storms the room, attracting attention and declaring her desire to engage in sexual experimentation with him. He leads Avery out of the room and dismisses her embarrassing experiment, recalling his first grade rejection when he attempted to grope her. Upon emphasizing her desperate need for experience with the opposite sex, Larson is persuaded. She hands him a study guide. The next day, the pair sat in Larson's room and devised the experiment's parameters, with Avery indicating that the experiences should be uploaded to Spock. Larson is originally skeptical but is swayed by Avery's resolute expression. Despite Avery's protests, she speculates that love is what makes a good bed partner. Eager to prove that sex and love are two different things. Larson, on the other hand, is certain that love leads to sex and vice versa, so they start the experiment by kissing. Larson leans in close to Avery, kissing her uncomfortably. He chooses music to set the scene and places Avery on the bed while they kiss once more. Because they are having difficulty establishing the mood, they decide to snuggle, reminiscing how Avery's successes were attained with Larson's assistance. He maintains they got along fine, but Avery discloses that they had a symbolic relationship, comparing herself to a crocodile and Larson to an Egyptian plover. Larson is taken aback 
back when Avery asks him to grip her breast and tells him to slide his hands inside her top to play with it. Larson agrees, which makes Avery ecstatic and she begs him to suck on them. She drifts off, picturing herself in a pool with synchronized swimmers, diving in deep and seeing Larson, who asks whether she likes what he's doing. Avery agrees to his delight, but is startled when she hears Larson unzipping her pants. She stops him before finishing and runs away, claiming that she has homework. Her thoughts are consumed with her one-of-a-kind experience with the experiment, which she deems a success. The next day, Avery consults Jafar, Mateo, and her gay classmate Tristan about their experience when it comes to having sexual relations with women. Tristan makes his case for a blowy, which Bianca backs up with a demonstration of how the tip of a man's member gets incredibly sensitive when stroked. Nikki, on the other hand, despises the idea of getting a guy's nectar in her mouth, calling it junk, whilst Troy disagrees, claiming that his man juice is the result of hard work. Larson is about to confront Lisa in the locker room when Avery emerges out of nowhere and asks if it's okay to drink ejaculate. Prompting him to escape as Lisa overhears Avery's comments, Avery rides her mini bike home, her interest piqued by a man's lollipop, which she sees everywhere and in everything. So she goes to Kim and Deb's house for comfort, but she's horrified to see hanging wieners on the wall in Deb's art. Deb mentions that she is experimenting with different art forms to desensitize her child. Kim concurs, pointing out that lollipops come in a variety of sizes and shapes, enabling Avery to try and discover what she likes. She exits the house and approaches Suze, who is watching porn. To Avery's astonishment, she explains that it's also a way for her to mentally prepare for the dead. She goes to Larson's house and informs him that they will be proceeding to their third trial of the experiment, where she will be performing a hand job for him. Larson warns Avery not to rush it, so she gives him a pep talk while digging it out of his trousers. The trial reaches its conclusion as Larson announces his climax. After finishing, Larson asks if he might return the favor, but Avery is hesitant and chooses to call it quits, leaving him. She rides her bike, recognizing she made a mistake creating the app because she has no clue what fulfills her. 16 days before the STEM event, she contacts Danica, who is startled to learn that she is still unable to touch herself and, as a result, suggests using a sex toy. She remembers that she used to tinker with Suze's vibrators, either stealing the batteries or scratching her back with them. Back in the present, Avery bemoans her hate of vibrators to Danica, but she has to spice things up, so the sex guru directs her to envision the object of her desire while immersing in warm water and applying coconut oil before self-stimulation. Back in her room, she follows Danica's direction and massages oil on herself, but she is taken aback by Casper, who is eager to see her and her presentation. Avery waves goodbye and hangs up as she rushes to the bathroom, burying herself in a bath with warm water, cascading from the shower and satisfyingly striking her nether region. She nods off, daydreaming of Casper singing her a song, but she is awakened when Suze flushes the toilet, causing the water to become blisteringly hot. While Avery cools her privates, she receives a phone call from Larson, who inquires about her well-being while discussing her problem about not being able to achieve orgasm. They decided to play an erotic phone game. Larson says all the right things and she's close to finishing. However, disrupts her dream and ruins her climax. In the middle of the next day, Avery converses with her friends on the topic of how the female body achieves climax through foreplay, and someone indicates that it would be on any part of her. Some propose having her boyfriend explore her body, but their classmate Marla reveals that she can attain orgasm simply by shaking her chair. To Miss Russell's chagrin, Troy exclaims that she will be expelled. However, Tristan distracts the teacher, and the rest of Avery's team follow suit, and the class devolves into intellectual erotica as Marla experiences orgasm. Avery has an epiphany and hurries over to Larson, who happens to run into Lisa. The two are ready to discuss their date when Avery rushes over to Larson and asks to meet up with him, dragging him off. In private, they explore each other's bodies, and Larson discovers a particularly pleasureful spot for Avery. Avery imagines a pool where synchronized swimmers dance perfectly in harmony with her, and she finally reaches her first ever orgasm. Larson tries to caress her, but she gets the brilliant idea to name her application Sexual Allure. Larson is perturbed when he hears the word buddy from Avery when she thanks him for his help. Then Avery asks whether sex is usually this amazing. He is taken aback, but he confesses that he hasn't had sex yet and is waiting for the right person. Larson admits that he dated but wasn't sexually active, but with Avery, everything felt right. They began kissing deeply once more, nearly losing their heads in the process. However, Avery Avery intervenes, stating that it is incorrect and that, for the experiment, they should maintain a professional relationship. Larson sighs deeply and says that love and sex are inexorably intertwined. As Avery walks home, she rebukes his view for the second time, adamant that love has nothing to do with sexual pleasure. Avery unloads all of the data and finishes her job while calibrating her AI one final time. Larson invites Avery to go to a scientific display at a museum, but she declines, stating that her STEM competition is in 24 hours. Avery finished her application logo and readied herself in the morning for her journey with her mother's Deb 
Kim, and Suze. Avery meets Casper during the STEM competition and they exchange delighted hugs. The scene turns to Casper presenting his entry for the competition as Avery watches while her mind wanders to Larson. Later, they utilize Avery's app to take them through their first sensual experience together, but they feel awkward following the AI. They both take their clothes off and begin to bump uglies. Still feeling insecure, they stop midway, laying in bed dejected. Avery leaves Casper's room, puzzled as to what went wrong. She attempts to call Larson, but changes her mind. It's Avery's turn to present, and she wonders how she can sell it to the judge, even though the application doesn't work. Avery stands in front of a stage, stating that her software may help with the worries that come with losing your virginity. Seeing Casper's dejected expression, she quickly loses confidence, withdrawing from the competition in shame. Casper wins the competition with Avery out of the running. Avery approaches Larson late at night, claiming that the competition was boring. Larson attempts to keep Avery at an emotional distance because he is hurt and she doesn't have feelings for him. Oblivious to his true feelings, Avery thinks that Larson might be upset over her sleeping with Casper. This causes them to part ways, and Avery mulls over her data about love and sex while trying to make sense of things. The data shows that the finest part of having sex is falling in love with the person you do it with. Martin, Bianca, and Nikki all believe that being in love provides comfort which leads to a new level of trust in which both people understand and care for one another. They also stated that faith is the cornerstone for love and sex. Avery sits dejectedly on her bed, staring at a childhood photo of herself and Larson, realizing that what her classmates said on the cassettes is exactly what she is going through. Suze and Deb rush into her room to soothe her, but she is frightened and locks them out. Nevertheless, Kim, who has been more maternally attentive to Avery, tries to communicate with her daughter. Avery opens up about losing her only friend, so Kim tells her to tell Larson how she feels. With her hope restored, she walks into a rehearsal band where Larson is playing the trombone and declares that his idea about love and sex being linked was right. Larson, on the other hand, walks out of practice and Avery follows him backstage. Larson accepts that Avery was right from the start, explaining that she was the lonely crocodile who changed the swamp through her discoveries and achievements. He compares himself to the bird who loves and supports her. However, he needs to fly with other birds for the symbiosis to work. Larson tries to move away, but Avery keeps clutching him and declares that she will attend prom with him, showing him her prom gown while proclaiming her love. Still, Larson decides to let go of her, stepping away while Avery yells out his name. Avery saw bitter tears while hiding on the school rooftop. Unfortunately, Mrs. Carlson, who was about to smoke a joint, spotted her. They converse, and Avery admits to harming her closest friend with their experiments, only to discover afterward that she loves him. As a result, Mrs. Carlson assures her that it is normal, adding that love and friendship are a part of a journey in which individuals discover themselves. The next day, Avery approaches Lisa, who is singing on campus with her guitar, and confesses to her that Larson has had a crush on her. She urges her to invite him to prom night, but Lisa is hesitant, since she believes the two of them are already a couple, which Avery addresses. Larson is emotionally terrified, she claims, but he is the sort of man who will make the right girl happy, so Lisa accepts the offer. Mr. Vemmer is startled to see Avery barging into his class, where she expresses her disappointment at grade. While looking at Larson, who attends Mr. Vemmer's class, Avery admits that she misinterpreted his point about the paper and that she couldn't quantify love but could only feel it to the extent that she was willing to. While the teacher resumed his sentimental lecture, she left class, passing by Larson's desk. Avery watches Lisa and Larson dance tenderly on prom night with a sorrowful gaze, knowing that she orchestrated the whole event. Her peers dance passionately to slow music with flickering lights as she hastily escapes the romantic atmosphere. Mrs. Carlson, on the other hand, catches her attention and encourages her to dance. Avery and Larson grin at one another, her mind going over the lessons she learned from him, not on how to be skilled in bed, but on how to be kind to others, since making others happy makes you feel gratified. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.